moment from Europe. Olivier Jean de Bion of Belgium is an old favorite with Canadian race goers. Also in for another try at the Players 200 is Joe Bonnier of Sweden. New to Canada, Dan Gurney, the quiet Californian, arrives early with mechanic Jerry Eisert to work on his car in a workshop close to the most sports circuit. Invited but unable to come was Sterling Moss, winner of last year's Players 200. Old and new friends meet at the pre-race banquet at Toronto. Anyway, uh, it's probably because I'm the first one coming from over the Atlantic to race in Canada that uh, I have the honor to so, uh, The atmosphere of racing in Canada is an atmosphere we don't feel anymore in Europe. Maybe because you are more, uh, you have more amateur in Canada than in Europe. And uh, I would say also that this race, this time, made such, uh, is coming to be so important and the competition is coming to be so hard that if, if it's carry on like that for another few years, I hope you will have a, a race for the World Championship in this country. Murray Wallace, president of the Canadian Racing Drivers Association, introduces Roger Ward, twice winner of the Indianapolis 500. Roger, please. Thank you very much. I feel a little out of place being the lone track driver representing all of these great road racing drivers that come from our country, but I want to tell you this. The welcome that we've received here has been one that we'll always remember, and me especially, I, I can't get over, I'm just overwhelmed by the tremendous reception, and when I get back home to Annapolis and tell all the fellows how much fun I've had and how wonderfully they treated me up here, you probably have a whole bunch of them next time. And thank you very much for inviting me. Most for 24 hours before the race, and the teeming with activity. Last minute adjustments are made before practice begins on the two and a half miles of turns and straights. One car, a Corvette engine special, has been towed across the continent from Seattle, while other cars have come from almost as far. The Corvette special, with its driver Stan Burnett, won the Players Pacific race at Westwood, BC earlier in the year and guaranteed Stan a coveted place in the lineup for the Players 200. Europe's famed Jean de Bion has his first look at the car he plans to drive. This Corvette engine special is expected to be very fast on the straightaway, but at the moment, with most sports curves in mind, Jean de Bion is just as interested in the effectiveness of the brakes.
Cummins Ferrari, with a V6 2.5-liter engine, requires a lot of attention. Canadian champion Ludwig Heimrath, 1961 winner of the Players' Challenge Trophy, chats with Roger Ward before practice begins. It's the practice times that decide starting grid positions with the fastest cars claiming the front row. Out on the circuit, the Delu promises to be a potential winner. But the car is almost new, and Jean de Bion is slowed down by mechanical problems. I went to run with the uh, Delu uh, special, and unfortunately we had some oil pressure trouble, and that's why I couldn't carry on on that car. During practice, new drivers find out the tricks of the course. Gregory is too fast into Moss Corner, but no harm is done. The yellow flag is a warning to drivers that there's an obstruction on the course and that extra care is necessary. The race marshals round the track have a heavy responsibility. Their quick actions can prevent unnecessary pileups. For the drivers, today has been all too short. For the gatekeepers and the ticket sellers, the night's work is just beginning. Right through the night, race fans from hundreds of miles around journey to Mosport Park to set up camp, to meet old friends from last year, and to make this race meeting into the most memorable one of the year. The day of the race is here. For the crowds, traffic jams are a rarity. Extra police and a year's experience keep the lineups to a minimum, and everyone is in the park for the start of the race. A lovely summer's day, and by noon, the crowds look like Coney Island on a long weekend. With oil pressure problems and clutch trouble, the Delu has been retired. A hurried phone call to Milwaukee and a very fast tow job brings John de Bion a Porsche RS60 for the race. Among the notables at the Players 200 is Manuel Fangio, probably the greatest driver of all time. Now 50, Fangio retired from racing four years ago at the very peak of his career. Five times world champion, he won almost half the races he entered. The start of the race is almost at hand. The course car, with the red warning flag, heads around the track to alert the course marshal. In the control center, timers are ready. Cameras are trained on the grid where 27 cars, a record entry, are ready to start the first of two heats, a hundred miles each. Roger Penske in the Red Cooper takes the lead. But by the second corner, Gregory in the Green Lotus is pulled ahead. Moss 
corner, and Gregory heads straight for the sand-covered oil slick. He gets back on track quickly with the rest of the pack hard on his heel. The end of lap one, and Jim Hall from Texas is in front. Gregory Slide has cost him the lead. Only two minutes since the start, and the pit crews are already in action. Ireland's Ferrari is having plug trouble. On into the second lap. It's Hall, Gregory, Penske, and the leading Canadians, Shaw and Bradley. The early pace is fast, an average of 88 miles an hour. Canadian drivers, this race means championship points towards the Players' Challenge Trophy. And in fifth position, Bradley pushes a little harder. Up the straight again, Francis Bradley of Toronto feels a change in the engine. Suspecting sand in the carburetor, he heads for his pit for a quick check, losing more precious seconds. Back into the race, now down in 25th position, Bradley has a long fight ahead. Hall's car is running well, and for a time, Gregory is content to wait in second place, Penske in third. Shaw trails the three leaders, with Gurney, the pre-race favorite, in fifth position. corner on the third lap, and the leaders are unchanged. Gurney, however, is pulling up close to Shaw, and by the end of the lap, the order is... Paul in the Chaparral, number 66. Gregory in the Lotus, number four. Penske in the Cooper, number six. And in fourth place, Gurney in his Lotus, number 96, trailed by Shaw in the Saddler, mark five. By now, Gregory has got the measure of the leader, Hall, and is ready to challenge him. Into Moss Corner, Gregory on the inside of Hall. Shaw is now dropping back with transmission trouble. Number 96, Gurney, has jumped into second place, while the leaders are beginning to overtake the field of slower cars. John on a lap behind the leaders, waves Gregory on, while number 96, Gurney, is eyeing the lead. In practice, Gurney broke the lap record set last year by Sterling Moss. He has speed to spare, and he turns the heat on the leader. these cars are doing more than 130 miles per hour. They make it look so easy. Ah, but is it? On most sports tricky circuit, just a shade too fast into a corner and the track seems to disappear from under the car. But there's plenty of room to maneuver the circuit has been carefully designed so that crowds are well out of the path of any car in difficulty. Jean de Bion, though far behind the leaders, is driving hard. 
the only trouble is that I don't have the same uh, tires uh, than Bernie, and uh, the, the difference of tires is about four seconds a lap. Francis Bradley swings through Moss Corner, fighting hard to regain some of the 20 places he lost in the early spin-up. Roger Ward is having difficulty with his car, a special consisting of a Buick engine and an English Cooper chassis. And as Ireland is back on the track, but too far down in the pack to be a threat to the leader. Stan Burnett, though a stranger to most port, is driving well. Danny Shaw, with six loose gear teeth rattling in his gearbox, is slowed to a crawl before retiring to the pits. With the first heat almost over, Gurney goes by in the lead, with Gregory losing ground slowly. As the heat comes to an end, Gurney is the halftime winner, claiming a $500 prize for the heat. Gregory, sickened by heavy oil fumes, will need the one hour's rest between heats. Gurney's mechanic, with the first heat prize in sight, signals to Dan. time. One heat gone, one more heat to go. 100 miles covered in one and a quarter hours of dust, noise, fumes, and nervous tension. In this race, the slightest relaxation, the slowing down of as little as a half a second a lap, can put a leading car out of contention by the end of the race. Gregory's position is now second to Gurney and 30 seconds behind him. During the second heat, he must make up a full half minute in order to challenge Gurney for the lead. Roger Penske from the U.S. is unchallenged in third position, the only driver on the same lap as the leaders. Even to Roger Ward, a veteran of the Indianapolis Speedway, racing sports cars is no holiday. Rivals for the annual Canadian Driving Championship, Heimroth and Bradley, outside the Porsche tent. Inside the tent, mechanics manhandled a new engine into Bournier's car. Bradley and Bradley Jr. stretched their legs in the busy paddock area. Aunt Whistle's car, an early Lotus, is packed up, so he joins the fans who wander in the paddock, taking in the colors and the sights, the sounds and the smells that make up racing. relax after the terrific tension of the first heat but the hours break is almost gone and the crowds are ready for the second half of the feature race Penske grabs the lead going into the first corner with Gregory hard behind him. Knowing that if he can get ahead, Gregory can hold off Penske. He tries to take the green lotus around the outside of Penske into the third corner, but has to drop back. Determined to grab the lead, Gregory keeps on the Cooper's tail, waiting for his chance to overtake.
first lap, Penske, Gregory, Paul, Gurney, Bradley, and Ireland. Gregory must gain first position and a clear track to make up the 30 seconds lead he needs to win. On Moss Corner, he tries to take Penske on the inside of the curve. Then waves to Penske that he'll overtake him on the straight. Gregory's in the lead and pushing hard. Already he's lapped the circuit in one minute, 35 seconds, an average speed of 91 miles per hour. Gurney is in third place now, trying to prevent Gregory eating up his 30 seconds lead gained in the first heat. Behind the faster cars, the under two liter Porsches are going like clockwork. But the fast pace is taking its toll. John Cannon's D Jaguar from Montreal is giving trouble and struggles around on its last lap. Difficulties. His right door opens and scrapes the road. Moss Corner is getting more treacherous with every lap. The spilled oil denies the drivers what little traction is left. This flag means oil on the track. Even the best drivers find the corner more and more difficult. troubles plague cars during the race almost half of the starting line of 27 cars will be eliminated Penske wheels through Moss Corner while not far behind him there's an exciting race within a race among the Porsches of Joe Bonnier Bob Holbert and Ludwig Heimrath each racing for the class prize in the under two liter category lap after lap nose to tail the Porsches put on a superb show for the crowd The battle for the big money is still between Gregory and Gurney. Gregory goes past, but where's Gurney? Gurney's Lotus is in the pits. A faint noise that Jerry Isert detected earlier seems to be a broken piston ring, and the engine is overheating. nothing that can be done. For Gurney, the race is ended, and the way is now open to Gregory if his car will last. The pits have been busy today. Another car is in the Porsche pit. It's Bonnier, number 99, the leader of the Porsche battle in for oil. His place among the leaders disappears rapidly, and he drops to fifth place while feverish hands work to refill the near-empty engine. Only six laps to go, too short a time for Bournier to make up the lost time, but he goes out anyway. The Bradley pit is happy. Bournier's stop plus Bradley's hard drive puts Bradley into fourth place. The last lap, and Gregory is the undisputed winner, more than a minute ahead of his closest rival, Roger Penske, with Holbert in third place. Gregory wins his first race in Canada, and his car, a three-year-old Lotus 19, gains the third victory in a row for Lotus at most point. Another Players 200 race comes to an end, and the eyes of the crowd are all on the winner, a very happy Maston Gregory whose share of the prize money is more than $3,000. The Players' Cup is presented to Gregory by Mr. J.M. Keith, Executive Vice President of Imperial Tobacco.
With his mechanics beside him, the winner begins his lap of triumph, and another player's 200 becomes a part of the history of motor racing in Canada.